Moral of the story is never open up a Slack message from Brian Power. Welcome in uh, here <laughs> to the college football kickoff show powered by wagertalk.com as we've got, uh, well, we got six games here, three best bets to go over a couple of uh, pretty important matching games starting here tonight uh, here on this uh, Tuesday. And Brian Power, Adam Trigger, Double R1L, Steve Merrill here along for the ride. We're going to get you guys all caught up with these and get you those best bets. And we're going to start with Maction, and nobody knows Maction quite like Brian Power there, especially this team here tonight, Ohio, taking on UB, University of Buffalo. Uh, at first glance, you would think this should be easy for Ohio, but is it here, BP? Well, Joe, first off, despite your constant attempts to mislead the public into thinking I went to DeVry University, this is actually my real alma mater of Ohio University we're talking about at Buffalo tonight. Both teams 3-2 and two in back play, but OU 6-3 and three overall, Buffalo 3-6 and six overall. Buffalo took it on the chin in the non-conference schedule and this is going to be Ohio's first game since what was a really disappointing loss that may have sunk their hopes and dreams for the 2023 season it was to rival Miami two Saturdays ago that loss leaves them one game off the division lead in the Mac East and keep in mind they now lose the tie break to the Red Hawks and the theme with this Ohio team this year <laughs> well Half of the equation, I should say. The real disappointing part has been the offense, Joe. Just not what it was in 2022. Uh, they're down 10 points per game from last year. Average 31.8 a year ago, 21.8 this year. Even with Rourke returning, there were a lot of high hopes. Early on, you could maybe attribute to him coming back from an injury. Uh, you know, that injury, I don't want to say it cost him the MAC title last year, but certainly they would have given a better effort against Toledo in that championship game if Rourke were healthy. On the flip side, the defense has been great for the Bobcats. 15.7 points per game allowed. That's top eight in the country, if you can believe it. They did give up 30 in that loss to Miami I referenced a minute ago. And I wonder, though, how much that had to do with Miami going from the pure passer, Gabbert, who was obviously injured out for the year, to the backup, Smith, who's more of a runner. Oh, you only – they didn't even give up 300 total yards in that game, despite 30 points. So the defense – you know, it, it was kind of unlucky to give up that many points. Buffalo, you talk about unlucky. Well, last week against Toledo, they had two drives, get inside the red zone late, did not score on either of them. It was a very lucky win on the under for me in that game. Uh, it started out, tons of points. Toledo returned the opening kick for a touchdown. There were 21 points scored in the first six minutes, Joe. I wound up still cashing an under uh, because there were just multiple fourth quarter drives from both those teams that didn't they didn't cash in. I think there were three total in the fourth quarter in the red zone that were no points between the two teams. Buffalo's defense, it got bad luck with explosive plays early against Toledo. I've mentioned the kick return. Toledo also broke a run early. I don't think that's going to happen against this Ohio offense. Buffalo's yards per play allowed in MAC play down to 4.73. That's much better than it was in the non-conference. I cashed the under last week when Buffalo played Toledo. That is the way I would play this game as well. OU much stronger on the defensive side of the ball, and I don't think Buffalo gives up the explosive plays we saw in the snow last week, Joe. So under 44 uh, would be my lean in this one. Looks like a lot of wind on tap here tonight in the weather as well. So uh, a little less scoring possibly as that number keeps creeping up as well. Seven and a half now across the board, uh, Ohio laying it. So pretty important uh, matchup there in the MAC here tonight. We've got a couple of best bets coming up your way, but a quick reminder here, if you're new to us at Wager Talk TV and college football is the information you seek. It's the information we have here at Wager Talk TV. So uh, become part of the family. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button here and get access to all the weekly top 25, top 50 uh, matchups that you need to know, including best bets here as we head over to Adam Trigger. And he knows a little something here about uh, college football best bets. He has been crushing it. And he has another matching game Pretty damn important here. The battle of, uh, well, I guess Michigan, sort of here. Western Central Michigan uh, getting ready to do battle. What are we doing in this one? 
Yeah, the the directional schools. That's what Kelly Stewart calls them. And it took me like a while to figure <laughs> out what she was referring to, I, which is really kind of ridiculous because it's quite obvious. Eastern, Central, <laughs> and Western Michigan being the directional schools. Anyway, two of them are playing each other here. Um, and, and I really, so I, I like this Western Michigan team a lot. Um, I The last time they played, we did a show. I gave it out as a best bet. They played Eastern Michigan uh, and, and they destroyed them. And I'll kind of go back to like, why I, that they're on my radar at this point and why I think they're, you know, just a, a team that I don't really want to play against, certainly looking to play on. I, you, you go back to the non-conference. They actually came up here to Syracuse and got blown out, but it was deceiving. Like Syracuse played the best game of their season from like an efficiency standpoint, just did everything right in the first half. And, and, you know, I didn't think Western Michigan even played all that bad, but the score line would suggest that they did losing 48 to seven. The next week they play Iowa. Great first half, and and the Hawkeyes, which were still much healthier at the time, pull away in the second half. I mean, if, if you go down the, the schedule, and there's a theme for Western Michigan. It's tough team that Western Michigan, you know, held their own against. The Toledo game, they had a lead at half. Um, the Mississippi State game, if you look at the stats, it's it's almost dead even. Um, you know, the, the final ends up being 41-28 Mississippi State, but that was a very even game. Uh, on the stat sheet, they blow out Ball State. They were competitive with a very good Ohio team. Um, hung around with my, you know, Miami of Ohio is the one that kind of like lost that that doesn't look great, but that's a really good Red Hawks team and a really good Red Hawks defense. And then of course, the most recent game where they they just trash Eastern Michigan uh, was never really in doubt. Central Michigan here, I think, offers a little bit more resistance than Eastern. I, th- I felt like the the Chippewas turned the corner a little bit last week. That was a really good performance against Northern Illinois. And, and so I think the only reason, Joe, that this didn't like make my card was uh, it, uh, just a you know little bit reluctant to bet against Central Michigan at this point. They're a team that I, I thought might be slightly better than the market suggested coming into the year. And I, I really feel like last week's, you know, kind of the, the way they played coming out and winning as a, as a dog and in, in what what I would consider more dominant fashion than that final score indicates um, 37, 31 against Northern Illinois pretty much led the whole game. Um, it is enough of a reason for me not to want to go out and lay points with them in a, a rivalry type game. But the way I lean here is Western Michigan for the very simple reason. I just think they're the better team on, on both sides of the ball. They're at home. And, you know, I, I just think, Better team, both sides of the ball. I could, I could probably stomach laying three. Uh, it didn't make my client card. If it, if it was pick, I, I may have, I may have jumped in with it. Um, you know, I really gotta love something. I'm, I'm seeing some three and a halfs and whatnot. If you can get a three, that's obviously far more appealing. Uh, but if, if I was gonna get involved with this one, no question, I would lay the points. And if you don't want to play the points, just play the money line a little bit smaller. I'll be somewhat surprised if Western Michigan doesn't find a way to get it done here. All right, waiting for uh, Western Michigan to uh, flex here and get it done again. Central Michigan here, another big action game here tonight. And, of course, Double R1L, he is uh, also going to stay in the state of Michigan, but I don't believe there's any direction with the game he's going to be talking about, and that's Michigan taking on Penn State. No east, west, north, or south with this Michigan. (laughs) We're talking about the Michigan Wolverines taking on Penn State. Talk to us about this game. A lot of people think, uh uh-oh, maybe this is the point where they just usher out Harbaugh at Michigan with a loss. Yeah, we've got to talk about one of the biggest games of the week, probably the biggest game of the week. In fact, it's so big, I'm going to talk about it several times. I did a standalone video on Monday (laughs) afternoon for this game that's available right now here on Wait for Talk TV, but I didn't have my 10,000 game simulation done quite yet. It takes several days to run the database. I wanted to give you an update here on Tuesday on who that projects. And then, of course, I'll dig deep here, even deeper this Thursday with my top 25 video. This game obviously will be part of that on Thursday night. So hit subscribe, hit the bell for instant alerts when my top 25 video goes live this Thursday. But as I mentioned in my first initial video on Monday, I like Penn State as a live defensive home dog. And when the little elves finished running the numbers in the computer, I was happy to see that they also favor Penn State as well. In fact, I think we also not only have a defensive dog in this game, but we have what I like to call a false favorite in this game because I do project 10,000 game simulation projects Penn state on average winning by one and a half points. And then I run other simulations as well that have them winning outright 
and yardage simulations that also had them outgaining Michigan. So I do think this is an overreaction based really on the Ohio State game a few weeks ago. And keep in mind, I had a strong best bet for my clients on Ohio State minus the four to four and a half. My projection made the game nine. Um, and I thought Penn State on the road, difficult step up in class was going to struggle. And they did. Uh, that's a team that went just one for 16 on third down. Uh, they really struggled offensively. But now we flash, fast forward here to a couple of weeks later. You've got Ohio State who's technically considered the better team than Michigan in the rankings and the polls. Penn State was a four, four and a half point dog at Ohio State just a few games ago. Now they're getting the same number as a home dog against Michigan. So that just shows how this line has been adjusted too much. I like the value with Penn State. And once again, I do have concern about the offense, but they're a live defensive dog to say the least. On the season, they're giving up less than 12 points a game, just nine points per game at home, giving up just four yards per play overall in the season, just two yards per rush, allowing just 59 games, perhaps the best run defense in the country. And this is a big step up in class for Michigan. You know, without Harbaugh, they didn't cover any of those first four games. They won them all as big favorites. Um, and they have, yes, covered four of their last five. One by 28 failed to cover last week by 30 as a 31-point favorite against Purdue. But if you look at the schedule this year, they have been at least a 24-point favorite or bigger in seven of their nine games. The only two games in which they weren't, they were 17- and 19-point road favorites at Nebraska and Minnesota. Now they're laying just a little bit at Penn State. So I like the fact that Penn State is battle-tested from that Ohio State game, and I think the result has now created some value. Nittany Lions get a big win here in this one on Saturday. You don't have to wait long. It goes early at 12 noon Eastern on Fox. All right, good stuff there, Merrill. That's the game of the week, and everyone going to be waiting for their Michigan taking on Penn State. But we do have three best bets we do want to dive into here on three, uh, well, some, some games here that uh, matter to a few of these teams here, especially in the Big 12. And we'll start there and head back to Brian Power with his best bet as Texas Tech traveling to Kansas to take on them Jayhawks here. And uh, three and a half, I think, is what we're seeing now. And uh, not a great spot for Kansas, or is it? Are you buying that maybe? No big deal with Texas Tech coming to town. Well, Joe, I've had my eye on this Kansas team now for a couple weeks. It was two weeks ago. I played them plus the points at home against Oklahoma. We all remember what happened there. Outright upset. First win for the Jayhawks over the Sooners since the late 90s. And you would have thought, I certainly did, there would be a letdown uh, the following week against Iowa State. And I faded the Jayhawks last week. Uh, it Again, I thought it was a great spot to fade them because they were a ranked team on the road facing a uh, unranked home favorite. That situation had seen the home favorite go 12 and three straight up previous uh, since going back to last year. Unfortunately, Kansas came out. They looked sharp, had a 21 three lead in Ames, and, and that was enough that they got the job done despite not running the ball effectively. Only 74 yards on 35 carries. So maybe the letdown spot now comes a week later. Uh, Kansas hosting Texas Tech. And they're laying points just over a field goal, as you mentioned. Interestingly enough, Kansas has been favored only one time over the last five games. And they suffered an outright loss to Oklahoma State. So, uh, you know, the role of favoritism now, let's see how that works. Uh, may, you know, it's something that the Jayhawks are unaccustomed to. And even though Texas Tech is four and five, I've got these teams power rated pretty similarly, to be honest. Home field, not what it used to be. I just don't think we should be getting a hook here uh, with Texas Tech, certainly not more than three. So there's value on the underdog. Uh, and the Red Raiders, you take a look at them. They've closed as a dog just once all season. And that was week two against Oregon, who is now playing as well as any team in the country. And let's not forget, Texas Tech led Oregon by double digits going into the fourth quarter. It was highway robbery that they didn't at least cover the game. We had one of those disgusting pick sixes in the final minute that you know cost me and I know cost uh, a lot of people uh, who had Texas Tech that day. But this, you talked about this game being important to some, Joe. The Red Raiders need win two wins in the last three games to get bowl eligible. After this, they are home versus UCF. 
And then they close the regular season at Texas. They're probably not going into Austin and winning, considering that Texas is probably looking to clinch a spot in the Big 12 championship that week. So they need to win this game for bowl eligibility. And just one last point I'll make, with the exception of the BYU game, where they were minus five in turnovers, certainly you can't win when you do that. Texas Tech has had the lead or been within three in the second half of every other loss. So like I said, this is a team that's better than its record. Kansas has Kansas State on deck. They're already bowl eligible. Maybe they've got an eye on next week. Think it's the peak of the market on Kansas. Give me the three and a half with the Red Raiders. All right. Taking the uh, three and a half with Texas Tech. You want to be careful not to get LeMoyne there. Uh, let's head over now to, uh, let's see if we can't get uh, Mr. <laughs> uh, Adam Trigger ready to go here with his best bet. Might be a little bit uh, of urgency, I'm thinking, in this one here. Uh, Trig, so tell us uh, which one of these teams coming up quickly do you like here? Yeah, so I think Brian and I are probably rooting for the same thing here. Um, you know, he talked about this one earlier from a totals perspective. I like Buffalo with the points. It's seven and a half now, man. That is awfully enticing. This uh, interesting how this got bet kind of bet down and then quickly bet up with Ohio going to six and a half and then to seven. But now I think it's kind of steamed to seven and a half. And so, like, without a doubt, in my opinion, the value is on Buffalo. And I, I think it's a, an okay spot for them. Um, you know, they, I really feel like they were unlucky to cover last week. Um, they, the, stati the statistics, especially after Toledo's kick return, uh, were very even. And they really left a lot of points out um, on the field in, in just like spots where you usually either kick a field goal or convert. Uh, Buffalo, one for six on fourth downs. And a couple of those were fourth and goal, like probably should have had more points than they did. Um, but the reason I like them here is I just think their defense is very active. Um, and, you know, they're up against an Ohio team that Brian already outlined playing great defense. Uh, but where I think the potential scores come from for Buffalo is sudden change type plays, short fields. Uh, Buffalo was able to force four turnovers against Toledo to stay in the game, and their defense has been better, partially because they're forcing more turnovers. Uh, the other thing Buffalo done has done better of late is run the ball, and, and they're just playing much better, in my opinion, than the team that you saw the first month of the season do things like lose to Fordham um, you know, and, and really struggle out of the gate. Historically, they do well as a dog at home in this spot you know actually this season they're only one in three at home but their one win was as an underdog to central michigan uh the three home losses they were favored in all of those so maybe that maybe the flip to the underdog role you know in in the prime time spot is a good thing for them i just think that this is a is a, a closer game you know you've got a, a low total in the low 40s it feels like points are probably at a premium here but buffalo does enough that i think they can hang around um, again, really think they probably deserve to cover last week. It cost me a big bet. Uh, I think they probably get the money here. It did not make my client card, but I'm awfully close with it. Uh, I'll call for the potential upset. And if not, I hope it stays within the number. If you decide to bet it, uh, give me the bulls plus seven and a half. It looks like most places now. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say the hook is available now. So, uh, <laughs> if you want to get above that touchdown, Go ahead and grab it here uh, now as we have one more best bet uh, available for you guys here with Mr. Double R, 1L, Steve Merrill. Do want to let you guys know once again, if you're joining us uh, for the first time, become part of that Wager Talk TV family. Get access to all of the college football content you need by simply hitting the subscribe button and hit that like button. We certainly do appreciate it. Because Steve Merrill, responsible for a whole lot of that college football content that you will find here on our YouTube page. And uh, Merrill, what is the best bet game you're focusing in on this week? Well, it's Tuesday, but I'm going to look ahead to a game on Saturday. And by the way, I forgot to do this earlier. It's Tuesday. It's Election Day vote. We bring out the big flag on Election Day. Oh. But this Saturday is also Veterans Day. Another reason to bring out the flag. So. A lot of pride this week in America. So vote early and often on Tuesday and then salute a veteran on Saturday. This is an interesting game here. You know, I talked about Penn State, Michigan earlier in the show. And I mentioned how Penn State, I actually didn't mention Penn State had a big win last week, 51-15. I thought that was a nice bounce back after kind of a non-covering win after the Ohio State game. They had that non-covering 
a win at home, but they looked good last week. And I also think it's a bad sign for Maryland, who's now lost four straight, both straight up and against the spread. Now, granted, they've had a 9-1 turnover deficit in those last four games. That can make you look a lot worse, but the defense is really wearing down. This is a team, their three wins prior had given up 17 points or less in three straight games. They've now given up 27 or more, including 33 or more in three of their last four, 27 or more in all four straight of those losses. And yes, they're taking a step down in class here against Nebraska's struggling offense. But I think Nebraska will have some success in this game against the worn out Maryland D, especially after allowing 51 last week and now having to travel. Database simulation, 10,000 games run through the database, has Nebraska winning on average by nearly three points. That catches my attention because Nebraska is currently a two and a half point dog. So I do think this is another false favorite. The wrong team is favored in this game. Other simulations I run have Nebraska winning outright and also winning the yardage battle. Um, so this is a live dog. I think it's a good spot to fade Maryland once again. I wanted to give it out to you early in the week here on the show, though, because it is sitting at two and a half. I'd wait, try to get plus three. It opened one. It's up to two and a half already. You know, the risk reward is worth waiting until Saturday to try to get a plus three or higher. But either way, I like Nebraska to win this game outright. And I do think there's some value with the Cornhuskers. That game goes early Saturday at 12 noon Eastern on the Peacock Network. Who knew? So you can check that one out. But I think we might get a plus three if you're patient and wait later this week. Hey, get my official best bets for this week at wagertalk.com, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and follow me on Twitter at Steve Merrill. You know the deal. Two R's, one L at Twitter, Steve Merrill. And we will have some strong best bets each and every day in basketball as well. Not a bad time to check out an all sport, all access. Save $50 instantly with promo code ALL30, ALL30, instant $50 discount in the 30-day package. Details on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Wow, looks like you got LeMoyne. That's what happened right there, Merrill, with that <laughs> Woo, Nebraska. It'll heal. Go. It'll Very heal. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, it will. It will. The Dolphins show up when like you least dolphin. expect it. Literally. Uh, all right, well, there you got it. We got best bets across the board. By the way, Adam Trigger, the $2 Tuesday handicapper, 5% best bet in college hoops tonight. If you're watching this on Tuesday, go grab it for just 2 bucks. But best bets all week long here by visiting Brian Power, Adam Trigger, Steve Merrill at their page at wagertalk.com. And, oh, yeah, by the way, we're not done yet. Plenty more college football content uh, just to click away. Hit that video on your screen right now. Get access to the rest of the top 25 matchups this week, plus more best bets available to you all right here on Wager Talk TV. Good luck with all your plays. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.